Ladies and gentlemen, showtime. Yes, showtime. <laughs> Here's Ronnie Bennett, ladies and gentlemen. She of uh, Lake Oswego. I move yourself over just a little bit because I to have my... To which side? To the... Let's see here. To your right side. Just There we go. Fine. Good. Because you were bumping into my picture. Oh, hey, we can't have that. We can't have that, you know. No, 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 no. Do, are you wearing that hat because it's your birth year? Uh, yes. Okay. okay we, <laughs> Making sure everyone well, can why, see it. Why else would I? You know when I was born. <laughs> what is that word up there at the top? Just put your head down. Oh, it says limited, uh, something. limited edition 1939. <laughs> <laughs> you know, there probably weren't a lot of babies in 1939. I, I also have a t-shirt. The same thing? Different. I think it says, oh, maybe gosh, it says limited edition. That's the edition. world know how old you are. Well, I, you know, I was on Amazon for some reason, knows how old I am. And so all of a sudden I say, oh, you oh, really isn't that funny? They 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 put up an ad for this you, for you. You might be interested in these T-shirts, and <laughs> I went, "Fuck yes, I'm interested in that." I buy a lot on Amazon. They've never done that for me. Oh, they will. Don't worry, you're just not old <laughs> enough. You got to realize, another month, I'm going to be eighty. <sighs> yeah, that's a big that's a big deal. Yeah, it is a big deal. Uh, at the rate I'm going, I may not make it, you know, but uh, I just... Uh, please, please. Uh, well, I'm just, uh, I'm, ti you know, I'm tired of the whole, you know. I, I never I never thought my uh, my genitals would get even with me. <laughs> you, know, so. you might want to explain that further. <laughs> Damn this penis, you know. Uh, but then again, you've got your whole set of cancers, and I won't even get into yours. I have, no, I have a cancer, and I have COPD. Do you want to know Two something? Big deal. They are big deals, something? and to I'm really working hard to balance what they each require. Today, especially. But today, I'm having a really, really good day. You're, this, if I you're so really. Busy, it would be a great day. You are. You are today. Uh, you don't look like there's anything wrong with you. Well, and it doesn't feel like there's anything wrong with me. Unless I try to walk too fast, then I'm, I'm well aware of something wrong with me. I'm okay today. Yeah. Maybe maybe the doctors are wrong. Maybe they are. <laughs> you know. You never know. Um, you know, did I tell you? I must have told you that the CT scan two weeks ago, that the cancer's on my, in my lung. Mm -hmm. uh, I've only grown a little more than a centimeter. Mm-hmm. Well, and there are much. no new ones. So what does that mean? It just well, there? it means it's growing because that's what cancers do. Mm. It's their job, um, but very, very slowly, and which is really something with pancreatic cancer. And uh, so, you know, so I feel good. And the, the the bigger problem in terms of day to day is COPD, and I go to rehab twice a week, and they're teaching me how to deal with that. So I feel pretty good. Yeah. No, you look you look spectacular, actually, and you're peppy and zippy and snarly. Oh, that's and... just because there's a lot of uh, caffeine in me this morning. Oh, I really? was really busy uh, today. Uh, okay. Well, yeah. Uh, but uh, 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 so uh, you know, it looks like uh, maybe you know, uh, certainly your your health is in a way. That it's it's not progressing too fast. I mean, it's it's, it's, it's really... progressing, but it's very very slow. And in fact, when I was still doing chemo, the doctor, the oncologist, wanted to do scans to check how it's growing or not uh, every two months. It was doing so well. He said, "Let's expand it to three. And it had been this last week, three months since my last one. And this one, he said to me, "I think we could go six months till your next scan." <laughs> To well, which I said, I will do three months. <laughs> I yeah, want to know what's happening. But that's that's amazing, you know. Yes. yes. Yeah. Um, I mean, it just. I mean, I I'm kind of humbled and well well aware that I'm a. The people of the Whipple surgery for pancreatic cancer, ninety percent of them, a huge percent, forget my number, uh, don't make it a year. I have gone a year and a half now since the surgery, and I'm really humbled by that. It just doesn't happen. And the reason you know, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, the Supreme Court Justice, 
um, you know, talks about her pancreatic cancer from 20 years ago is they caught it extremely early. Um, and that was, they weren't there for that. They were there doing something else and happened to stumble across it. Um, in my case, they knew what it was up front. And I just, I'm just... You know, I've never been the kind of lucky person that wins contests or the but lottery you won or this one. like that. If you're going to win anything, this is the thing to win, I think. Don't you? Well, the fact <laughs> that you were even capable or, or uh, had the ability to have that operation when only 10% of the people can yes. Yes. put you in, a, in an interesting category. And then to survive the Whipple surgery, you say people only survive how long? After the Whipple? I'm not sure, but I think it's about a year. And that's what I'm counting anyway. I haven't done, I, I've forgotten for sure, and I haven't done the homework. But, um, but call, let's call it close enough. Um, and uh, so, I mean, if you're going to win anything, if you're never, ever going to win any contest in this life. This is the one to win. Finally, at this age, win this, I'll yeah. take it. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's terrific. You know, I mean, what can we say? I mean, it, it's, it's, uh, it's marvelous. Uh, you know, it's interesting. It's interesting that, you know, I, I used to think that all cancers were alike, but they're mm -hmm. not. Yeah. They, well, until you get there, I think most of us do. You know? Yeah, they're not. I mean, uh, in the case of pancreas and in, in the case of prostate cancer, it's so different that if it even spreads to the rest of your body, they can slow it down using uh, re uh, depleting you of your testosterone. And, and that keeps it from growing? From growing all, anywhere else in the body because it's all prostate cancers that are going out there and spreading. Oh, and they don't attach themselves to other places. Well, they go other places, but once they're but there... That's why I'm saying they don't attach themselves well, in other places. Well, supposedly once they're there, you can use these, these, these female hormones. Uh, that, when they rob you of testosterone, they're really giving you female hormones. In fact, people who who have these hormone shots start getting hot flashes and things like that. <laughs> and they're probably all 80, right? <laughs> yeah. And most, uh, but something like 98% of prostate cancers are localized to the prostate, in which case they're easily either taken care of by hormones or, or radiation. So, mm -hmm. so you know, it if caught early, it's extremely survivable. And what's amazing about pancreatic is that the problem with pancreatic cancer is they don't really find it till it's late. Right. You know, and the fact that she found it early, and why can't they create, just spend all their money to find a test to catch it early? You I want know? to tell you something that happened to me that's interesting about that. I knew something was terribly wrong with me, but six months before they found it. And I had a different doctor then, and he spent about seven minutes with me and told me I probably had a, a flu. And that's when I fired him. Um, and then I tracked down and I had this new doctor and all these people at OHSU. Mm -hmm. And they didn't know either. And one of the reasons is that it's compared to most other cancers. Pancreatic cancer is so rare, a lot of doctors haven't ever seen it. Mm -hmm. And so... And, and nobody has the same symptoms. You have a wide variety of symptoms jumbled up and different in every person. But here's something that I didn't get from that first doctor, is that if you have urine that you have described as neon orange that glows in the dark, wouldn't you think that's a big alert to Wait, somebody? Neon, what's neon orange in the dark? What? What's neon orange? I just said urine. Oh, your urine. I didn't hear the word yeah. urine. I mean, it could light up the bathroom. Wouldn't you think that that's a real, I mean, it's not, I don't know that it's necessarily an indicator of pancreatic cancer, but it seems to me it's something that would make a doctor sit up and pay attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, neon pee. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it, it, didn't, it didn't glow in the dark, though, did it? No, but it but it was so bright. It seemed like it could really, you know. really. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm I will am for the next probably the next two weeks peeing blood. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, probably more than anybody wanted to know. It's really really wonderful all these things. But anyway, you know. So I I think you're you know I'm I, you're you're certainly in much better shape than I expected you to be at this point. 
Okay. Oh, me too. You know. <laughs> me too. <laughs> and and my my probably I'll hear, but uh, you'll disappear and I won't hear from you, and then I'll find out you got run over by a car. Right. You know. I mean, yeah. it's, you know. It, it, I mean it, it's you know I'm up and awake. I when we talk on 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 the Skype thing, but um, I'm tired a lot, a lot more tired yeah. than I used to be, and so I rest a lot and spend quiet time alone a lot mm -hmm. because that's what I need to renew and uh, so it's not I can't say it's like it was before I had cancer but it's um, it's nothing like what I expected and quite happily so well nothing. you've also adapted to a new normal well you, you I'm know. fine I mean that's a nice little cliche but yeah um, it uh, I mean, it, that doesn't say anything about what it is, so it, it's not useful. But yeah, um, it, it it it's well, never mind. You yeah, know, yeah. I don't know what no, to say. You're, you're, but I'm so happy to see that you're. Every time I uh, call you, I don't know what to, what I'm going to get. And every time lately, I get somebody who looks better and better. <laughs> yeah, and right. Better. Pretty soon there'll be this little girl barely yeah. getting her head up over the desk, right? Yeah, but uh, <laughs> you know. Uh, so, uh, Have you been watching the impeachment hearings? Yes, I, I watched today. Um, y you know, I find them hard to watch. Tell me your impression of Sondland. Well, I think, number one, he's a guy who's gotten dragged into something that he never expected he would get dragged into. I mean, he's not a, I don't think he's a public person. Okay, he's a guy who had a lot of money. Ah, oh, and he's loving every minute of it. Just no, look no, at him. He he's get, just he gave Trump give me more, honey. He gave Trump <laughs> uh, a million dollars and got an ambassadorship. You know, whatever. Uh, and uh, I, but I don't think he expected this to happen. You know, I'm sure he likes the attention. Oh, he loves it. I mean, just yeah. look at him. He's yeah. loving every second of yeah. it. Uh, well, what do you think of the guy? I think that he's lying. He continues to lie. Who? You can look at him and you can tell when he speaks he's lying. I What's mean, he lying about, though? What? I would have to go back and make notes. And like him, I don't keep notes on, on what I'm watching on TV. I mean, wouldn't you like to uh, believe everything he but you, said? I, it's the manner in which he says things, the certain things he repeats in the same speech, um, the odd laughs uh, in odd places and nobody laughs with him. Um, I just think that, you know, I think that the overall scope of what he's saying of, I talked to so-and-so, whatever, whichever so-and-so yeah. he's speaking of, I think that those are all true things. I think that what they said and how they said it, I don't believe him for a minute unless it, unless it, it makes him look good. Then he does, then he's not lying. Yeah. But, but, uh, you know, a lot of what he said was kind of damning. Of Trump, I mean, of of just the people of Trump and don't the people around. Don't you think that was the point? Yeah. Well, I mean, don't we? I mean, we as people who don't like Trump would like him to believe what he says. You know, uh, but I'm not saying. Well, yeah. you know, it's complicated. Um, I think that he riffed a lot on stuff that he doesn't have anything to back him up. Okay. Yeah. Um, what do you think? And I about think that if you had all the facts, if I were one of the people on the staff who was required to have what facts we've got yeah. and was watching today, um, you could be specific about that. Um, but generally, he did a lot of riffing on without telling us anything. Yeah. What did, what did you think about the uh, who's uh, the military guy they had a couple of days oh, ago? Oh, don't you just love him? I mean, somebody yeah. who loves the country as much as he does and is proud of being an American and absolutely, who knows how, I mean, was a yeah. baby, a, a toddler when he got here. So uh, it's not like he brought other beliefs, uh, you know, political beliefs with him, but he bought the American dream and the American ideal, and he has lived it. You know absolutely everything that he says is true. I mean, you just... And, and what he... And, what, there, and, and we live in such a cynical world, and he is not a cynic about America. Right. And I just love that about him. Yeah, yeah. And I think it's his belief in America that made him so upset by the things yeah. he heard. Yes. You know. 
Um, I just love it that you got these Republicans who consider themselves great patriots, and yet somebody like this comes in and they try and treat them like shit. Yeah. You know? uh, and and you know what? Did you see? I mean, did you see his face when the Republicans were saying such, not quite such nice things about him? He just. He, he just knew he is so sure of himself and his own truthfulness and his own beliefs yeah. that it just it just goes off of him like water off a duck. Yeah, I'll tell you, you can't get to him because he's so real. I was listening today. I was I had a dental appointment, so I had a bus home, which takes a while. So I listened to the the thing, and it just was it just was annoying me, and it was annoying today me. or yesterday. Are you saying today? Okay. Uh, today, uh, it was annoying me because of the partisanship, you know? I mean, I understand we live in a partisan society, but if you're having a hearing, the job is not to sit there and try to take sides, but to try to discover, mm -hmm. right? You're and, absolutely and right. The, and the Republicans are not in any uh, desire to discover, they no. just get up and pontificate about how the person's wrong because the president didn't do anything wrong and blah, blah, blah. But that's not what it's about. Ask some questions. See what the answers are, okay? And, I, and the same is true of Democrats. I mean, it's not to say they aren't partisan, too. But I think the whole idea of these hearings is discovery. And they don't, not, neither side really seems to be on a mission to discover. They just are on a mission to uh, solidify their own beliefs. You know what else, a little side issue this has brought up for me? Yeah. Um, is the last time we had impeachment hearings mm -hmm. in 1973. Mm -hmm. Nixon and I was on my first TV job. I was a production assistant mm -hmm. at the Dick Cavett well, no, Show. That was the time before with Nixon. Then we had Clinton. But I'm not yeah. talking about Clinton. I know, but you said the last time, and I, this wasn't the last time. Nixon you wasn't the last it. time. Forget it. I can't remember where I was. No, you were talking about spot. Nixon. I can't you, remember. No, you were talking about Nixon, and you were working for Barbara I, Walters. No, that oh. isn't what I said. Okay. I'm sorry. I apologize. It's like when we were married. Anyway. Uh I was working as a love, lowly production assistant okay. at the Dick Cavett okay. Show. Okay. And the executive producer, when the hearings were coming up, mm -hmm. the executive producer had brought in a whole bunch of television sets and scattered them all around the office. So I think his hope was that at least we'd get some work done while we were all watching the hearings. <laughs> yeah. So he let us have free reign with all the TV sets. Yeah. And so we really, really got to watch them closely. Plus, I was surrounded by 30, 35, 40 people who, like me, were news and political junkies. Yeah. So that everybody knew what they were watching. They knew the background. They'd been following politics for years and years and years. So the discussions around the office were just fabulously interesting. Yeah. And I kind of miss not having that this time. Yeah. Well, do, did you find, do you, as you, in your memory of that particular event, do you remember the same kind of partisanship, or did you seem to find that they were trying to discover? Well, you have to remember that we were living in a very, very, very different times, that Republicans, Democrats, didn't matter, were all much more respectable people than they are today. Mm -hmm. And respectable in their demeanor, in their language, yep. so that nobody would ever say, Something about his ass, you know, or he loves your ass, or something that Sondland said. Yeah, yeah. Um, that that would just never have been said. That everybody was um, uh, more respectful. I mean, is the way to put it. I think. Yeah. Uh, it's what I remember. Um, you know, it, it's a lot of years. You can't I can't necessarily trust my memory that long ago for nuances that you're asking about. Right. But. I remember what you said earlier in this conversation, that people actually answered real questions then. They were very pointed questions sometimes, but they were questions as opposed to the the senators or the, uh, the Congress people pontificating. Which is what they do. You yeah. Know? Uh, and and it, it was, 
the idea is, is these hearings are meant to be exploratory, and you're looking for answers, and you're looking, you're, you're questioning what went on, and you want to find some answers. You're searching out the truth. None of these people are searching out the truth. They're just simply bolstering their point of view. And that's it. And I, uh, you know, and I don't understand all these Republicans just being lo in lockstep with Donald Trump. I think that is a bad road to go down. Listen, you know? do you think that these, those people, just the ones in Congress, not the base, you know, yeah. um, do you think that they are true believers or because that's the only reason I can come up with for their blind behavior well, to somebody no, there were who doesn't seem to deserve it at all. And and I can't imagine, I mean, you remember when it came out that J. Edgar Hoover pretty much had dossiers about bad stuff on clearly anybody, yeah. everybody in government? Right. I don't think that Trump has that. No. I don't think that no. his group is organized enough to ever have done that. So the only reason is just blind loyalty. Listen, he, he, the blind loyalty is only <clears throat> as long as Trump has oh, an over 50% rating when it comes to impeachment, where people, uh, it's under 50% rather, that believe that he should be impeached. Once That's it goes, well, it, it it's wavers back and forth, and this is among Republicans too. Uh, I, well, I mean, that's. Yeah. Uh, I thought you were talking. But, but what I'm saying is, is that there's a point at which the every politician will bail out on Trump because he doesn't have the backing. But right now, they're afraid he does, and they're afraid of him be, of of being bullied by him. So they want his support. They're beginning to find out his support ain't worth shit because every time he goes down to like Louisiana and says vote for so and so, people vote for the other guy. You but know? isn't it? I mean, that's ex that was the point I was about to make. Yeah, is that the last two people that he made a big deal about campaigning for yeah. with them in their states? Yeah, I mean, they they lost by very very small margins, but they lost. Yeah, and. So I don't know if that's still driving Republicans who are in office and have to run again to be reelected. I don't know mm -hmm. if that's driving them or not. And it's seen, I'm not sure, maybe you you noticed more than I did, <laughs> but uh, like something like 20 Congress people, many of them senators, but also House members, have already announced that they won't run for another term. What are they afraid of? I mean, why wouldn't they, why would they yeah. support him? Well, I mean, I just, you know, I don't understand this blind support of a guy who goes against all the values that Republicans usually look towards. I mean, you know, they don't believe you cheat on your wife. They would fight against that. And yet the guy who was the, you know, went out and had sex with a porn star, it's okay, we'll stand by him. I don't understand how the religious <laughs> right can follow this guy. You know, I mean, no, it, 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 he has no, he has no uh, 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 Christian qualities about him. And he doesn't go to church every Sunday. I mean, he doesn't give a shit about anything but Donald Trump. You know what else is important? The damage that Trump and his people, and he's really got a knack for hiring crooks. Um, the, the, they've done so much damage to the country, even the world, mm -hmm. um, whether it's, what is it, up to 75 or 80 environmental controls that they've just done away with or Trump has done away with, and all of the norms of running government and, you know, extorting how, foreign governments and that sort well, of thing. how about... How, it's, it, yeah. Let me finish my yeah. thought this time, yeah. please. Yeah, sure, go ahead. Um, is that even if you could start over tomorrow morning with a more reasonable person as president and in those cabinet positions, it would still be, I think, decades before we get anywhere near the a reasonable democracy with a reasonably small amount of grift and graft. It, I, the, the country's going to be a mess if you could get rid of them all today. 
What about the damage he's done? For a long time. What's the damage he's done uh, to our our standing in the world? I mean, that's going to be take years to get back. You know. Mm-hmm. So anyway, ah. We should talk about happier things than Donald well, Trump. You know, I, it, well, you, we should talk about what interests us. But um, it's it's not that I'm unhappy. I'm very worried for the country, short term and long term. Yeah. Um, I am curious now that if the Senate, and I'm not in the prediction business, and I don't have a lot of patience with people who try. If the Senate does not vote to convict, I I don't even want to try to imagine what Trump will do next, that he'll be unleashed. Yep. I think he's already been unleashed. Hey, listen, guess what? I just looked at the clock and we've gone over. Yeah, yeah. Star, sorry to end on such a dire topic as Donald Trump, but... You know, let me ask you one last question. This is a fuck going Trump over time. Trump or something else. Well, no, one last question. You and I both have limited times on this planet. Nobody knows, neither of us know, how long or how little we've got. Well, I can pretty well tell you I won't be here in about five years. Okay, <laughs> okay. And I'll tell you that I'm planning on being here in five years. But no matter what, I know that my time is finite now. And the question is, why do we give a shit? I care about the future for people who will be here. I, that's me, me too. It's a very unselfish thing because we could both say, fuck it, I'm not going to be here. I don't have to clean up this mess. But you are, folks. So, you are out there. Who? Are, but who do you think feels differently? Oh, I think there's some people who don't give a shit. I honestly believe that because if everybody gave a shit, there'd be <laughs> there'd be we'd be rioting in the streets, okay, over the, all this sh- crap. Do you know what I think is amazing? Speaking of rioting in the streets, yeah, Hong Kong, that the people have kept it up for more than six months every day. Hordes of them in the streets that's protesting. Right. That's right. I think that's the most amazing thing. It just doesn't happen that way here. People do one march and then they think they've done the whole job, you know. Yeah. And yeah. and the Hong Kong, the people who are out there just, I I just, they're amazing. Well, my wife's company, you know, is a Chinese company. And a lot of the people who work How for How has that affected their workers here? Uh, it, ha- it hasn't affected the workers here at all. You mean Hong Kong Chinese, not mainland? No, these are mainland. It's a mainland, oh, it's company. mainland company. Mainland okay. company, but it has people and offices in Hong Kong uh-huh. because they're investment people and they're banking people. It's the largest bank practically in China. It's called Citic. Mm-hmm. And, and uh, uh, they're, they're sending back reports saying it's getting pretty bad. You know, and they have to go to work every day. You right. know, so it's. But, but I'm taking it from the other side of the yeah. point of the view of the protesters of day after day after day they are out there. And this is something they so deeply believe in. I'm, and we're not yeah. talking a little march of, you know, several hundred people. We're talking tens of thousands well, what's all the inter- time. What's interesting is that the Chinese government doesn't really know how to handle it. They they are at a loss for how to handle it because they are. That's the point of great big groups of people yeah, protesting. Yeah. They they they've been able to deal with it in the past because it's been a different kind of dynamic. But uh, and this is also you know the the financial center. The, this is the, the 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 what we could we call it? It's the treasury of China. I mean, this is where they make their money. Their biggest money is in Hong Kong. So it's 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 really they they I don't think they really know how to handle this and uh, I think eventually they'll handle it badly and people are going to get killed. That's what I. Have a couple died. At least a couple died already. Yeah, already, but I'm saying it could get a lot worse because if the Chinese government just says fuck it, we're you know iron every hand. time you predict something, it's always drastic. <laughs> Yeah, well. You're there complaining about what a terrible downer subject for us to end up. <laughs> and your predictions are always the worst thing that could happen. We better get going before everybody is so depressed by us that they can't stand it anymore. <laughs> uh, we get to see you in two weeks from now? 
Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, that's Ronnie Bennett. Timegoesby.net is her blog. Read it. It's great. Thank you, Ronnie. I promise I don't talk about politics very much. <laughs> right. <laughs> Bye-bye.